Hi, I'm Barbara Wesley, your host of Siebler Treasures. This edition of Siebel Treasures will feature Martin Link, an anthropologist, archaeologist, historian that's going to f talk to us about some things that are really important to him. And then we also have the Animal Care Center. There are many, many pets that need to be adopted, so let's get out to the Animal Care Center and get them. And then remember, we need to spay and neuter. Also, Ron Gonzalez with the library is featured and also Josephine Hurtado with Grants Main Street. And they have some exciting things that are in the mill. They need volunteers also. Warrior Pegboard will transform your workshop or garage to a clean, uncluttered space. Warrior Pegboard is the strongest pegboard in the world. Holds up to 2,500 pounds on a single panel. The hooks will not fall out. What you will need. Select the size, anchor to a stud, admire your handiwork. Warrior Pegboard's strong, sparkling appearance was designed by a veteran. Each piece of your Warrior Pegboard system is made in America. For sizes, prices, and shipping information, just select Warrior Pegboard at Amazon.com, Walmart.com, Jet.com, or DiscountRamps.com. For wholesale, military, and government sales, contact John Wesley. Well, welcome to Cibola Treasures, and we are at a treasure here at the Mother Whiteside Library with Ron Gonzalez. Ron, uh, we see wonders on wheels behind you. Tell us what that's all about. Well, it's a it's a it's a it's a mobile museum really offered by the uh, New Mexico Museum of Natural History. I think I said that right, the Natural History Museum. Uh, and what they do is they send the bus out to um, with this year the theme is uh, dinosaurs, loosely termed. So you've got fossils in there, you've got bones and things that the kids can look at to really uh, put a picture to some of the the, the history of of dinosaurs in our state. Well, you know, I have a fascination with geology and uh, I've had an opportunity to see one of the dinosaur bones down at Ambrosia Lake oh, one wow. time. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, paleontology is really all over our state. It sure is. In fact, I, I found out that the Coelophysis, the, the state fossil of New Mexico, um, they they found lots of them in an area that I'm real familiar with, and it was something I didn't know. So I kind of brought that to full circle. And just a moment ago, I was speaking to the director of the museum here. We were talking about the fossil down south that the young man tripped over and, and found a jawbone of a previously undiscovered uh, dinosaur. So it, it, you're right, it is so exciting, and we're just pleased that we can bring something like that here to the folks of Grants. Well, speaking of the southern part of the state, several years ago, there was a uh, tracks of a fossil up at Picacho, near Picacho Peak, okay. and it took uh, the paleontologist from New Mexico State University quite a long time to dig out that that track 
that this fossil had made, this dinosaur had made. And so we've seen tusks, we've seen all kinds of things all over the state. And, and it, I think um, what it really shows is that um, not only is New Mexico a hotbed for these things, but there is so much probably more we could do to teach kids, to teach everybody really about all this. Uh, you and I are probably more inclined to stay up with these things, maybe through watching news or reading magazines, but how many of us are out there that aren't aware of this? And, and there again, just bringing it back to being able to create some awareness with this so that hopefully people will get out there and, and do their research and, and come across these treasures that we have found. Right, well, when you get to the new uh, Mother Lights Whiteside uh, Library, you're going to have a big parking lot to put lots of buses in. <laughs> That's right. In fact, it, it uh, we one of the things we hope to have is um, the ability to provide you know food trucks or or a um, or a big thing these days. We're hoping that with these special events, we can bring in food trucks uh, just to add to the experience, but also to have plenty of space to do bigger and better things. The the, the response to these. The things we've thrown out there in the last year has been just tremendous and and boy we just can't wait to just keep bringing more and more to the folks of Cibola County. Right and you know we get your uh, notes uh, advising us on the events that are taking place here and this summer has been a wild summer. It has and and one of the reasons we cordon off the parking lot you can't really see that in this presentation but we we figured this is going to be a popular event because based on what we've seen our other events do. And sure enough, blocking it off was the right thing to do because we have had a steady stream of visitors. We've had school groups visiting. So again, it makes us think that the people of this town are hungry for these kinds of things. And this summer has been a great indication of that as you're pointing out. Well, what are some of the things that you have brought to our community this summer? Well, you know, the kids tend to really love things like puppet shows, magicians. I feel that those kinds of things are, are give an experience to children that they might not get unless they're in a big city. Um, and so we factor those decisions in. We always like to try to tie things to literacy. So hence we, we get the mobile museum. Uh, we did an event this summer with um, the Grants High School baseball and cheer teams where they acted out a, a story for kids and that was just incredibly positive and well attended. And so we've had a mixture of literacy, of fun, of events that kids might never see had they, unless they were to leave this town uh, to go to a bigger city. So it's been a cross section of a lot of different things. Well, Ron, uh, you have done a phenomenal job for the Mother Whiteside Library. And what is coming up next? Well, the big thing obviously is the grand opening of our new library and we, the dates go back from October, November, a lot of it depends on uh, when furniture arrives. <laughs> we can then start moving in. If you've been watching the construction, you've probably seen that the outside seems to be getting closer and closer. Um, so really what we're focused on now that actually the summer reading program ends August 5th, with the, with the closing of that we can then really focus on um, moving into the new library, starting off with a big bang. We may, we're talking about a series of grand opening events versus just one, uh, maybe a month long of Saturdays where we do something special for a month just to get people in there. And so really, once the summer's over, we'll focus on that. And then from there, I think the sky's the limit. We're looking at science programs, robotics, um, Legos, all kinds of great stuff for kids once and everybody really once we do open the new place so our focus will be on that after the summer programs end here. Well, you know I grew up in a city that had a phenomenal library and during the summer I would go out and check out maybe eight or ten books at a time and I could keep them for two weeks and then go back and turn those in and get more <laughs> and so that occupied my summer a lot and I just enjoyed being in the library because it was such a special place to be. Right. Same here. And in fact, I, I do think about those experiences of when I was young. I had a neighborhood library that I could walk to and, and we did seem to spend hours and hours there, whether reading or hanging out. And, and I think, not, I, I keep mentioning the new library, even now, 
we have a space where people can come in and use a computer, time for quiet reading or reflection. So the, the goal always is to um, call on those experiences of youth and, and create a situation where people just want to hang around. And uh, we're, look, we're hoping that'll continue. Well, we want to take a quick tour of the uh, Wonders on Wheels, a museum on the move. So we're going to go and do that real quick. Okay. But Ron, uh, you are phenomenal. You have, you know, you're an advertising and promotional genius. So we're so glad to have you. I'm very pleased to hear you say that. And coming from someone with your esteem, it truly is a compliment. Well, thank you very much. And we wish you success in this new adventure. Thank you very much. Hungry? It's El Cafecito. Red or green? Can't make up your mind? Then try the Christmas burrito at El Cafecito. Voted one of the top 10 burritos in the state of New Mexico is just right. It's always the right time for your friends to gather and enjoy a fabulous breakfast. Get your chili fix for lunch at El Cafecito. Dinner is always special at El Cafecito. Remember to leave some room for dessert, too. You can count on El Cafecito for the best chili in Grants, made fresh every day. Always fresh. In a hurry? Call 285-6229. The drive-up window will have your order in a jiffy. Make your business meeting, banquet, reception, and special occasion a success. El Cafecito has the perfect venue. Utilize the state-of-the-art electronics to create a professional presentation. El Cafecito is famous for the best New Mexican food and grants and their friendly, fast service. El Cafecito, serving the Grants community for over 30 years. Located at 820 East Santa Fe Avenue. Welcome to this segment of Cibola Treasures. In our studio today is Josephine Hurtado. And Josephine, you serve in our community on a, in a very special way. So what is what are you doing right now that's uh, so important to our community? Currently, I'm the president of Grants Main Street. Okay. <clears throat> and um, we were at the city council meeting the other day, and they've reduced the amount of money that they're giving to Main Street this year, primarily because of they have less money to work with. So <clears throat> you're in need of what kinds of needs do you have at Main Street right now? Um, at the moment, we're, we're always looking for volunteers. That's our biggest resource. Uh, the funding did affect us a little bit, but we are all expected to tighten our belts in time of downturn. And uh, we're always looking for other funding options and grants to uh, keep the program running and create new programs. Now, you had an event this last summer that was quite a... a an event new to grants, but it's not new to the world. No, it was the Seven <laughs> Trails of Gold geoca and geocaching. Um, I was very excited about it. We had a very good response and turnout, and we still to this month have people coming out finding the caches and the off-road bikers coming out and using the trails that were set up. So it's become a weekend destination for a lot of a lot of people to come in and explore our wonderful area. Isn't that great? So if we had this consistent flow of people coming in because of your brilliant ideas to bring this into grants, um, now this year you had how many uh, sites? Uh, we had 35 sites. <clears throat> okay, 35 sites yeah. where people could go to. Mm -hmm. And it consisted of on three trails. We're going to expand that to seven trails next year okay. and increase it to a three-day event. Really? Well, one morning I was passing on Santa Fe Avenue, uh, El Cafecito, and I saw a huge group of those on motorcycles waiting for, for El Caf to to open up, mm -hmm. they were ready to get out there and go look for the jewels in Cibola County. Yes, and they're, they're avid um, cross-country bike riders, and they use their GPS just to find the trails and stuff, and it's been great. 
Well, I was mentioning this to my son, and he <clears throat> has Google Earth, and he was saying, okay, now exactly tell me how to get to it. <laughs> and I said, well, I would have to get directions again because um, you were driving, and mm -hmm. it, was a, it was really an enjoyable morning. Yes, out by, <laughs> we were out by Sawmill Road, and up in that area, Limekin Canyon. Right, right. And I had I had tried to go to Limekiln Canyon several years ago and was unable to to get directions to it. And so that was my first opportunity to go there. And when I thought about the rigors of those people hauling this lime process out of that area. And this was done, what, about 1910, 1920? Yeah, the early 1900s. And yeah, it's really amazing the, what they could do with their bare hands and just um, basic horsepower. Right, right. Well, it's an amazing place. So man, we've got some things coming up that Main Street's involved in. And what's the first one coming up? Uh, we're assisting the chamber this year again with the Fall Fiesta, October 14th and 15th. Uh, we'll be uh, working on the Amateur Chili Eating Contest, which I hope everybody will come out and try their hand at. <laughs> and uh, also we'll be having a, hosting a car show, Show and Shine. Okay. So those two things you're responsible for. Right. And, and, then, you, and you need volunteers, don't you? Yes, we can always use volunteers and all different expertise levels. I've gotten so many ideas from different people coming in that of what they're interested in. It, we really need that diverse um, knowledge. Sure, we do. And you know, bringing new ideas to our community is really important. If we're going to be um, on the cutting edge of tourism, because many years ago, I think it was 94, 95, I did the economic impact study for Dr. Lees at the university. And way back then, we went to the Department of Transportation to determine how many vehicles came down Interstate 40 and how many exited to come into grants. Well, it was determined that about 95% of those exiting coming into grants were grants residents. Mm -hmm. So we were attracting very, very few people off the interstate to come into our community. And I'm seeing more of these groups that have motorcycle clubs in foreign countries, Japan and uh, the and Germany and France and various countries, they're getting together and coming into our community um, via Route 66. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I-40 is a great <coughs> untapped resource for us and we need to figure out how to get them off the interstate. The geocaching I think has been one good tool um, I've had people from as far away as England stopping just to get a get, pick a geocache. Really? While Isn't they're that... traveling, so. Right, right. Well, you know, tourism, we, I had um, someone with me that I had, had never been to Gallup to see what was in Gallup and comparing Gallup with grants. And the, of course, you know, being the Indian capital, you know, of New Mexico, um, they had that attraction of people coming in to purchase Indian art and craft. But uh, the comment was, well, why can't Grants have this, we've never been a tourism destination until right. recently. Mm -hmm. It's always been mining and ranching and, and that sort of thing. But it's never been tourism. And I think our mindset needs to be changed that if we're going to have the kinds of jobs that we want in our community, we need to focus on tourism and train our young people um, because we have so much here. Right. I mean, it's a wonderful place to live and, and visit. I mean, we have two beautiful mountain ranges. Our climate is moderate, and it's just a great place. And it really is. So the first event was going to be the... Uh, fall Fiesta. Yes. And then the second thing you're going to be doing? Uh, November 11th we'll be helping with the Veterans Walk from Veterans Park down to Fire and Ice Park. 
Uh, we're going to be selling memory um, bags that you can purchase and put, name your loved one that served, and they'll be on display at the Fire and Ice Park. <clears throat> okay, all right. And then the next event coming up? Uh, after that, we're right into the middle of winter and our uh, holiday light parade, okay. the second weekend of December. You know, one year I was watching the holiday light parade, and I was thinking as I saw these these floats go by, any city in the country would be so proud to have those floats in their community. And we need to be encouraging our organizations to have or, and businesses to have a float. Yes, and because they're they're spectacular, <coughs> and the kids love them. And uh, with technology and LED lighting, it doesn't take a lot of generators and noise, and they can really be beautiful. They really can. I saw a motorcycle one time all lit up, and I thought, "Golly, what a great idea!" <laughs> now um, there are some needs that Main Street has besides volunteers. What are some of the things that you need? Uh, well, currently we're still looking for an executive director to uh, run the day-to-day -day operations of Main Street. So we're interviewing now and we'll hopefully find a proper fit of a candidate here soon. Okay, so what are the requirements for an executive director? Um, you have to have an outgoing personality. You're basically a one-man show, so you have to be versatile and no word and the community and um, it helps if you have grant writing skills because that's going to be part of our fundraising is grant writing and different events to help raise money so we aren't as dependent on the city and uh, other government organizations right so we're not as affected by their downturn now what is the status <clears throat> right now of the accreditation I know that we became accredited, what, about three years ago? How long does that last, and what, what is Main Street, where do we stand with that at this point? We're still nationally accredited, <coughs> and uh, the state has been very helpful in allowing us time to meet the requirements with the executive director. Okay. And so uh, is that renewable every year? Is that the way that it works, or is it... About every two years, I believe. Every two years, okay. <clears throat> so if you're interested in becoming the executive director for Grants Main Street, you need to get in touch with uh, Josephine Hurtado. And what is your number? It's 505-290-0381. Okay, 290-0381. And uh, you need to be able to manage, uh, you really need to be a manager. Yes. They have to have management skills, self-starting <clears throat> skills. And, and have a vision and a love for this community. Yes, definitely. Right. Well, Josephine, I wish you well, and thank you for all the things that you're doing and Grants Main Street is doing as a result of your leadership. And we just encourage you any way that we can. And if you want to volunteer, there are some events coming up soon that they need volunteers for. So remember that number, 290-0381. Okay, yes. so call Josephine, let her know that you want to volunteer because there are some needs there. And you know, sometimes these volunteering opportunities are only, you know, you only need to be there for two or three hours sometimes. Yes. So it's not like you're volunteering two or three days in a row from sun up to sunset, right? Right, yeah. I mean, two hour, just two hours during the event would be a great help. Okay. Well, Josephine, keep up the great work you're doing at Main Street. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to this segment of Siebel of Treasures. Riverside Auto Diesel is the place to go for everything mechanical. Bicycles, motorcycles, RVs, cars, and semis, too. Car a little sluggish? Riverside Auto Diesel can fix you up with routine oil changes and a tune-up. Then your car or truck will have superb engine performance. Tires for every truck or car are available at Riverside Auto Diesel. You'll experience the difference with the right tire for your vehicle. Transmissions need routine service. Don't get caught in the middle of nowhere with a transmission failure. A cool car is a pleasure to drive. 
when the weather is not. An air conditioner leak can be repaired and you're off to an enjoyable summer. When your car breaks down or you have an unfortunate accident, Riverside Auto Diesel has road service and towing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Friendly, knowledgeable, ASE certified mechanics, Riverside Auto Diesel is New Mexico State approved. For all of your mechanical and automotive needs, see Keith Ford at Riverside Auto Diesel. Located at 1433 East Old Historic Route 66. Call 287-3543 or 290-7459. Well, welcome to this segment of Cibola Treasures. We have Martin Link here, who's an anthropologist, archaeologist, and historian. And we are here to talk about a very serious thing in our state, in our community, and it deals with the old Fort Wingate. And of course, most of us know here in Cibola County, the first Fort Wingate was down here at San Rafael. And um, then it moved uh, east of Gallup. And perhaps you, before we get into all of this, who were some of the famous people that served at Fort Wingate? Well, of course, Blackjack Pershing is uh, one of the few. Uh, <clears throat> MacArthur, both MacArthur's, Arthur MacArthur, who was one of the first recipients of the Congressional Medal of Honor during the Civil War. And when he was, his first stint at Fort Wingate <clears throat> was when um, his son, uh, Arth, um, Douglas, was only about eight years old. And then later on, when Douglas was a division commander under Pershing, he served there again. The, the person I gravitate, and this because along my line more, is a surgeon general. He was a major. Uh, and his job was being a surgeon, and and um, oh, man, I can't remember Matthews, uh, Washington Matthews. Well, he became so enamored by the Navajo way of healing and uh, taking care of sick people and that sort of thing that he learned the Navajo language. He got together with an old buddy of his by the name of John Wesley Powell. They created the Bureau of American Ethnology. They created the word ethnology right there at Fort Wingate. And then Ma Matthews began interpreting the nine day rituals of the Navajo, the, the Yevache dances and the mountaintop chants and all of these things, and then publishing it in Navajo as well as in English in uh, editions of, of this uh, Bureau of American, uh, American uh, Ethnology. Ethnology. Now, do you have a yeah. copy of that book? I, I have copies of every one. I have a complete set of that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the fact that we, we're looking here at a, uh, a thing. I I will um, um, if I could just the second. Okay, I the names right now. I should have it'll, written them it'll, down. It'll come to you. Yeah. Um, but they're both. Mex Mexicana, Mexicana, but it's an A, not an O. And then there is another name, and it's also in Spanish, the female version. We had a, a person on our task force intrigued by that. It turns out that during the time when they were recruiting Navajo scouts, to fight the Apaches, they actually recruited and enlisted two Navajo women up around for the Torreon area. Okay. They have now been acknowledged by the 
National Museum of Women in the Military it's, it's, mm. uh, in Pennsylvania and archives to be the first two women ever to serve in the U.S. Army in a combat mode. Mm. Now, a, a fair amount, several hundred women served during the Civil War, but they all, when they were recruited, they dressed like men, they had men's names, mm. and they fought as men until they got injured or killed or something. Oh my God, this person was a, a woman. But they never went in as women. Mm. Uh, so there's all these little things that are happening, but the most disconcerting thing is that last October, I and Scott Merrill, the son of Paul Merrill from the, heard by the grapevine that the Bureau of Indian Affairs, who still maintains the property, has signed a an agreement with a uh, company in that in Oklahoma to demolish all these buildings the 31 buildings and they do, were trying to do it very quietly so we went to um, Sharon Pinto well, I don't mention I don't mind mentioning names because she brought this on herself but she is in the regional director of the Navajo area Bureau of Indian Affairs, which includes this part of Fort Woodgate, okay. where the old barracks and the school area is. It does not include or even concern where the uh, depot is and all those <coughs> igloos. And that area is being contested by both the Navajos and the Zunis. Mm -hmm. and all the way up through the Washington level. The Navajos want all of it. The Zunis want half of it. Now that's the, where the... Where all the igloos are right. and where the depot is. And that's it's, to the and, west. No, it's to the north. Well, it's right up to uh, against the interstate. Right, and but that's it's... the key. Now this is due... Uh, if we're... Um, uh, look at here. Here's, here's where the igloos are, right. uh, west to Ann and uh, to the north. Uh, the Zunis want to build a casino, and the Navajos don't want them to build a casino. Oh, of course not. Because then that would infringe on their casino, right. which is five miles away. So while we have the major casino war going on with this area, and this area of the Fort Wingate Reserve is under the control or the administration of the Albuquerque BIA. And now, just slightly, we've been told that the Albuquerque BIA has control over the Navajo areas. So we're playing all these dirty politics. Okay, so but, let's get to the, the purpose of our meeting, and that right. is they're wanting to destroy this historical site Right. And, and there's a total of 31 buildings. But, you know, they've got the parade grounds there. They've got the administration building there. The, the they've got, barracks, I mean, the, and okay. it's just, it's an amazing, you know, I was there 25 years ago, and I was there just within the last six months, and it's just deteriorated so badly. But these things, and I'm going to give you my opinion. I rarely do this, but... Our government keeps wanting to acquire more and more and more that they don't maintain what they have. And here is a historical uh, site that needs to be maintained, and it, it's got the old 1916 cemetery out there. It has, um, I mean, people would love to go and see this historic site. This would pull tourists off the interstate to go and see this, and we are destroying it. So if you have an opinion, um, send your letter to Martin Link, and he's at 2302 Mariana Drive in Gallup, 87301, um, if you're interested in preserving this. But he has a task force in Gallup that is attempting to preserve 
the old Fort Wingate. Right now, all we're trying to do is convince the Park Service, I mean, convince the BIA, don't demolish the buildings. Well, but that they're old, and I said, uh, and we're not using them anymore. I said, don't do it until we can find out which buildings are historical. And right at this point in time, we're safe, because if you tear a building down, it's gone forever. So don't tear any of them down yet. You can always tear a building down, but you can't always rebuild it. And wait until the National Park Service gets involved, because they're more in tune to restoration, preservation, and, and presenting our past, our history, our legacy, not, not the BIA. And a number of these buildings are from the original school uh, system that and, was there. And I've been there when they had school going on there. Not now. I know, oh, it's yeah. closed. It's all closed now. But I, I th the story of how the Bureau developed schools for Native Americans is a story that needs to be told as That's well. Right. Uh, it's something that the BIA should be proud of, that they did that. There might have been some discrepancies or problems, but there was problems no matter what school system. Well. And, but the fact is that uh, yet the Park Service involved in it, it's, it's 495 acres, this area that we've had uh, 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 delineated in red and that's the area that we're talking about and, I, and so I'm thinking that um, if we had a group of people here in grants that would support this maintaining the history of our area maintaining this Fort Wingate where famous people in our history served there and then we had the BIA school there it's just an amazing piece of property that needs to be maintained. So contact um, Martin Link. By the way, his number is 863-6459. He's in Gallup. That's 505-863-6459. So Martin, we've, been, we've had the high sign for a while. But get involved. Please get involved in maintaining our history. Rochelle of First Street Cafe has been known as the pie lady for years. Two years in a row, First Street Cafe has received the best dessert designation by the Grant Seville County Chamber of Commerce. Just a few of the breakfast items include quiche with fresh fruit, First Street's breakfast burrito, and check out the huge pancake. Lunch features a French dip sandwich with homemade potato salad. The special soup of the day and sandwich is sure to satisfy. First Street's chili bean soup is a crowd pleaser. The menu for breakfast and lunch offers a selection that will make your meal ever so special. Let's save room for dessert. Homemade coconut cream pie is a favorite and it sells out quickly. Let's not forget the pecan pie and the cheesecake. Sugar-free desserts are available too. Rochelle and her staff welcome you to the best dessert in Cibola County. Plus, there's so much more to enjoy at First Street Cafe, located at 1600 West Santa Fe Avenue. For takeout orders, call 287-7111. You'd do anything to take care of that spot on your lawn. So why not take care of that spot on your skin? If you're a man over 50, you're in the group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the cancer that kills one person every hour. Check your skin for suspicious or changing spots and ask someone you trust to check areas you can't see. Early detection can put you in a better spot. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out what to look for. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. This is the city 
where danger lurks. Today, a new creature walks among us, terrorizing innocent citizens. They prowl the streets alone and in packs, causing mayhem, destruction, and carnage. Warning, until this threat can be contained, we must all be on the lookout for the dreaded digital deadwalkers. They're not looking out for you. Dude! Engage! A public service safety message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who want to keep everyone well connected. Sorry. With strong, healthy bones. Welcome to this segment of Cebula Treasures. We're out at the Animal Care uh, Center on Sacalaris, and we have two pretty good-sized pups here. And what is your name? My name is Tamara Townley. Tamara Townley? Yes, ma'am. And Tamara, what's the name of this pup? This is Stella, and she is nine years old. Okay. Pretty well-behaved Stella. She and is. who is this? This is Wyatt, and he's five years old. Five-year-old Wyatt and, yeah. and nine-year-old Stella. So they need a good home. Uh, they look like they are pretty well-behaved pups, and they're Absolutely, they, they grew up together. Why she she adopted him, so they've been together his whole life. Okay, so these are two dogs that have grown up together, and it would be great if someone had a nice big yard for them, and wanted two dogs that were really settled, uh, calm and quiet, and and uh, just easy to get along with, and they like uh, people too, don't they? Absolutely. Okay. Well, we've got some more that are coming out, so just we'll be right back with you in just a short while. Well, Joseph is out here, and he has brought us two kittens, and this one is a noisy one, and that one is a calmer one, but she, this little kitty needs a home and is begging for someone to come and adopt it. So if you've got a home for a little kitty that wants a home, come out to the Animal Care Center and you can adopt it. What's the name of this one? Uh, right now they, they don't have names. They don't have names. No, they don't have names. Okay, so you could even name them. But she, see, they're crying for attention. And it's, look at the pretty little face. And look at how calm this other one is. We've got two, two little kitties that need homes. So come on out to the Animal Care Center. You can adopt these kitties today. So remember that they've got kitties and puppies and older dogs and quiet dogs and and all kinds of dogs i hear them barking but this one is such a pretty little blue-eyed kitty i think they're blue eyes they may be green but this is such a pretty little black and white kitty and that's such a pretty little um, cream and white kitty almost pink and white anyway come on out we've got some more to show you we'll be right back well, we have a bunch of pups out here that are playing and barking and wanting attention. These are needing to be adopted too, but they're all out here, and we've got some that are saying, please, please, come adopt me. Uh, these puppies need good homes, and we've got pretty dogs, big dogs, black dogs, all kinds of dogs that just need homes. So come on out. Remember at, um, and it looks like we've got just all kinds of specialized breeds. I know, I know you need a home, don't you? Anyway, um, come on out to Animal Care Center on Sacalaris. This is Wink and Tink, and they're uh, beautiful, beautiful dogs, well behaved. You can see that they're ready to be adopted. Uh, curious a little bit, but even not afraid of the camera, not afraid of being up on that bench. Uh, I'm sure they'd like to get down and play, but aren't they sweet? And look at their faces. I mean, they've got beautiful markings. So come on out, see if you can get Wink and Tink, and uh, they need a good home. They're beautiful, beautiful dogs. So Wink and Tink, um, hopefully you'll have a new home soon. Yes, you will. So come on out to the Animal Care Center on Sacalaris. These, they have even more puppies uh, they've got tiny puppies, they've got big puppies, they've got older puppies, and they've got kitties. 
they just have a lot of different things that uh, a lot of different cats and dogs for you to adopt. A, a wide variety. So come on over to the Animal Care Center. They're ready to be adopted. Look how sweet they are. Oh no, maybe he'll give me a warning. 108 Regional, I'll be on a traffic stop. I'm with the Cibola County Sheriff's Office. The reason I'm stopping is because you weren't maintaining your lane. Do you have your driver's license, registration, and insurance with you today? Yes, I do. Sir, have you consumed any alcohol today? No, I haven't. I can smell alcohol coming from the vehicle, sir. Are you sure? Okay, maybe I had two beers. Place your hands behind your back for me. I'm going to be placing you under arrest for DWI. Warrior Pegboard will transform your workshop or garage to a clean, uncluttered space. Warrior Pegboard is the strongest pegboard in the world. Holds up to 2,500 pounds on a single panel. The hooks will not fall out. What you will need. Select the size, anchor to a stud, admire your handiwork. Warrior Pegboard's strong, sparkling appearance was designed by a veteran. Each piece of your Warrior Pegboard system is made in America. For sizes, prices, and shipping information, just select Warrior Pegboard at Amazon.com, Walmart.com, Jet.com, or DiscountRamps.com. For wholesale, military, and government sales, contact John Wesley. Vision loss is not something that you feel until it happens. Most people lose their vision from diseases like macular degeneration and glaucoma, not at birth. With macular degeneration, you lose your central vision. You have a blind spot right in the center of your face, so I can't actually see your face. So even that little circle in which I could see became a big blur. I was 65 when I first was diagnosed with glaucoma. There were no symptoms. I had no headaches. Three million Americans have glaucoma, and half don't even know it. 11 million people in the United States have macular degeneration. You lose mobility. Independence changes your entire life. So many eye disorders can be treated if caught early. My husband tells me that I have beautiful brown eyes, and I don't want to lose that. Make a plan today to get your eyes checked. Visit brightfocus.org to learn more. Hungry? It's El Cafecito. Red or green? Can't make up your mind? Then try the Christmas burrito at El Cafecito. Voted one of the top 10 burritos in the state of New Mexico is just right. It's always the right time for your friends to gather and enjoy a fabulous breakfast. Get your chili fix for lunch at El Cafecito. Dinner is always special at El Cafecito. Remember to leave some room for dessert, too. You can count on El Cafecito for the best chili in grants, made fresh every day. Always fresh. In a hurry? Call 285-6229. 
the drive-up window will have your order in a jiffy. Make your business meeting, banquet, reception, and special occasion a success. El Cafecito has the perfect venue. Utilize the state-of-the-art electronics to create a professional presentation. El Cafecito is famous for the best New Mexican food and grants and their friendly, fast service. El Cafecito, serving the Grants community for over 30 years. Located at 820 East Santa Fe Avenue. Carly, I'm 15 years old and I am a heart recipient. I got my first heart transplant when I was one and a half years old. I got my second heart when I was 13. When I step out on stage, I think I'm communicating with people. I would like to tell them that I want to make a change in life. Like, yeah, you can have two heart transplants, but it doesn't stop you from doing the things that you love. When I get my driver's license, of course I'm gonna say yes to be an organ donor because I've been saved twice. So who says I can't save somebody else? It's just the beginning of a new story. This gift of life was made possible by an organ donor. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Que 
que no voy a sufrir, que no me vas a lastimar. Y al irte tú, mi amor, que al irte nada cambiará. of harmful rays will show up on your skin. Time may not be on your side. Learn how to protect your skin at spotskincancer.org. The police department is reminding us that slowing down in various locations is really, really important. We have speeders on Santa Fe Avenue and 1st Street and 2nd Street and Mesa Boulevard and Roosevelt. You name it, all over town we have speeders. We have children that are walking to and from school, children that are playing in the parks. So please slow down. Let's be the most courteous drivers in the state of New Mexico. I want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of Cibola Treasures brought to you by our fabulous sponsors including Seven Cities Productions and Comcast.